Okay, folks, welcome back. Uh, this is lesson 8.3.1 from CPM Geometry Textbook. Uh, title of the lesson is a special ratio. I want to talk about a couple things here. Uh, don't forget what a ratio is. Ratio is a comparison of two numbers. We often see that as a fraction or a decimal or a percent. Uh, and I know what you're thinking. Well, certainly all ratios are special because it's math, and math is special. But maybe uh, what we should say is we're going to be talking about an extra special ratio. Uh, one of the things that we're going to do in this lesson is we're going to look at regular polygons again. And remember, that means that a regular polygon has equal side lengths and equal angle measures. And specifically, what we're going to be looking at is area and perimeter. Perimeter is um, it is really easy for a regular polygon. It's just uh, side length times number of sides. Area was a little bit more complicated. Uh, if you recall a couple lessons ago, we talked about the area of a central triangle. Um, and we calculated that for some regular polygons, and then we just did that number times n. So I'm just going to make that notation there, uh, and you'll see what I mean in, in just a minute. Okay, that's enough for uh, an intro. Let's jump into the notes. Okay, folks, let's jump into the notes here. You'll notice it's pretty quick, only one page. Uh, we got a table um, in question 8-90, polygons with infinitely many sides. Looks like we're going to be looking at a whole bunch of different polygons, different um, different regular polygons with different values for the side length, and then we're going to do something with perimeter and area. And then in question 8-91, we're going to analyze uh, what we did in question 8-90. So the key, the essential question we're trying to ask here or answer here is what if it has many, uh, infinitely many sides? Uh, and by it, we mean a regular polygon. And by the term here, infinitely many, that means our number of sides is going to go towards infinity. That's what we're going to look at. Okay, so for each polygon, find the area and perimeter if the radius is one unit, and that's uh, this value here, one unit. So if that value is one unit, we're going to calculate the perimeter and area. And I mentioned in the intro so slide, we're going to do that um, with some tools that we've already done in a previous lesson. So I'm going to start by kind of adding some annotations to this. Uh, uh, what we're dealing with here is a, a pentagon, regular pentagon. Um, so I'm just going to add a couple pieces of information right there. And if it's a regular pentagon, I know that all the sides are the same length, and I'm going to call those S. I also know that this uh, central angle right here, that's going to be 360 degrees divided by N, the number of sides. Well, what I'm going to do for this uh, central triangle um, that's at the bottom is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drop a perpendicular here. And this value is going to be our height. This angle measure right here is going to be half of 360 divided by n, because I'm splitting that central angle in half. So that's going to be 180 degrees divided by n. Uh, and then I'm going to have this length right here. And this is going to be half of the side length. So this is S over 2 here and S over 2 here. Oops. OK. What we're going to do now is we're going to analyze this half of the central triangle, just this little piece right here. And we're going to come up with an expression for S and for h. And that expression will be in terms of n, the number of sides of the regular polygon. So let's go ahead and look at s first. So if I look at this uh, little triangle here, I've got uh, 
Uh, S over 2 is the opposite side um, from this angle 180 over N. So we're going to do sine of 180 over N. That's equal to the opposite leg, S over 2, divided by the hypotenuse. And that hypotenuse is this uh, radius of one unit, the distance from the center of the polygon to one of the vertices. I can rearrange this and get that side length S equals 2 times the sine of 180 over N. Okay, so in terms of coming up with an expression for S and H, I'm halfway done. I have S completed. Now let's take a look at H. In this case, I'm going to use the cosine ratio because H is the adjacent leg to that angle 180 over N. So I have the cosine of 180 over N. That's equal to adjacent leg H divided by hypotenuse of 1. Uh, this one's a little easier. I don't have any fractions in there to deal with. I just have H equals cosine of 180 over N. So uh, success. I was hoping to establish a relationship between S and N and between H and N, and I've done that. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is come up with a um, formula for both perimeter and area. And as I mentioned on the intro slide, the perimeter one's pretty easy. Perimeter is going to be equal to S times N, uh, and that's just going to be 2N times the sine of 180 over N. So there's success. We've come up with one of the two formulas we need to do to fill out all the information in this table. Uh, area is a little bit trickier. For the area, the first thing I'm going to need to do is come up with the area of one of the central triangles. So we know that's one half base times height, and that's one half. That's a terrible half, folks. You deserve better than that. One half. Uh, the base is S because I'm including this entire base. So one half of S, which is 2 times the sine of 180 over N, times the height, which is H, which is cosine of 180 over N. And I hope you notice uh, something uh, magical happens here. I have one half times 2, and one half times 2 is 1. So the formula for the area of that central triangle just becomes the sine of 180 over n times the cosine of 180 over n. That means the area of the n-gon, it's just going to be n times the area of the central triangle, which is going to be n times the sine of 180 over n times the cosine of 180 over n. And folks, that's the magic that we're going to need to complete this table. Uh, we have two formulas, one for perimeter, 2n sine of 180 over n, and one for area, n times sine 180 over n, cosine 180 over n. Uh, I want to caution you here when, uh, in a second here, I'm going to ask you to fill out the table, but uh, be careful. When you're entering this into your calculator, uh, make sure you have that, both the 180 divided by n, you have that in the parentheses be uh, with respect to the sine function. Same with the cosine function. Make sure you have that 180 divided by n in parentheses before you uh, hit enter. Otherwise, you could get some strange results. Okay, so what's, uh, what's our objective now? We have a formula for perimeter. We have a formula for area. And what I want you to do is I want you to complete this table. Okay, I want you to go ahead and round your answers out to, well, let's just go two decimal places. I think, I think that's sufficient. Uh, and you're literally going to plug in the different values for n into the formula. So if I'm doing the perimeter for an equilateral triangle with three sides, I do 2 times 3 times sine of 180 divided by 3. And I would get an answer of about 5.20. That's for perimeter. For area, I'm going to scroll down to the area formula. I'm going to do 3 times the sine of 180 over 3 times the cosine of 180 over 3. And when you complete that calculation, 
uh, you're going to get an area of about 1.30. And go ahead and round these all to two decimals. I am, I, here's what you're going to do right now. You're going to pause the video and you're going to complete the table. Then you're going to turn the video back on and you're going to see if your numbers match what I have. So seriously, please pause the video and try this on your own. Okay, folks, I hope you actually paused the, the video and actually tried to complete some of this table and boom, there you have it. There's all our values. So we have a pattern here as N increases, our perimeter is tending towards, it looks like 6.28. And as N increases, our area is tending towards what looks like 3.14. Uh, and I just wanna give you a little bit of perspective on what we're doing here. Um, a regular polygon, as we know, has, uh, is a polygon with congruent sides and congruent angles. Uh, so it, it's kind of hard to, I mean, pretty, it's pretty easy to visualize, uh, you know, the equilateral triangle, the square, the pentagon, the hexagon, our friend, the octagon, or all, you are familiar with that as a stop sign. Uh, Nine-sided, we don't see very often, ten-sided, etc. cetera. Um, but it's fairly easy to see those that have kind of single-digit values of n. What's really hard to do is as we get up here to kind of visualize what those things look like. So I wanted to give you a picture of one of these, and I, the one I chose is the 90 con. Okay, so I'm gonna scroll over to the right here, and we're gonna see if we can't take a look at a picture of a 90 con. Okay, here you have it. This is our friend, the 90 con, which has a formal name of any I'm sorry, I don't have any idea how to pronounce that. Uh, but that's what it is. That's the uh, that, that, that's the, the formal name for the 90 gon. But take a look at this thing. I mean, you can't even see the individual breaks in the side length. I mean, that certainly looks like a circle. If I remove those points, you would say, yeah, that's a circle. And that's the whole idea here as we tend towards larger and larger values of n, our regular polygon starts to look like just a plain old circle, okay? So let's use that information to kind of help us answer uh, this question down here where we're gonna do a little analysis on our data. First thing here is, what do you predict the area will be for a regular polygon with infinitely many sides? So I think as n tends towards infinity, the area will tend towards 3.14. That's what I see in the table. And if you're a savvy math student, you'll recognize that that number is approximately equal to pi. What about perimeter? As n goes to infinity, perimeter tends towards 6.28, and that is approximately equal to 2 pi. Part B, what's well, another name for a regular polygon with infinitely many sides? Well, I'm going to say it just like I did in those previous questions, as n tends towards infinity. A regular polygon tends toward a circle. Last but not least, does the number 3.14 look familiar? Well, it, it absolutely better look familiar. I already told you that, that it, it is the approximation we use for pi. So let's go ahead and uh, summarize this. Uh, if so, what do you, uh, we're going to share a little bit about that number. Okay, I'm going to say it sure does look familiar. Three point one four is approximately equal to pi. So what can I say about pi?
Okay, so pi is an irrational number that describes properties of circles. I'm going to talk about what this word means in just a minute, uh, but let's take a look at how it describes properties of circles, how this number describes properties of circles. Well, we, we have this idea here of perimeter. And it looks like the perimeter of a circle is... Uh, 2 times pi. Now keep in mind that's a circle with a radius of 1. And then we have this idea here that the area of a circle with a radius 1, it looks like that's going to be uh, just plain old pi, 3.14. Okay, uh, let me just comment on that word irrational real quick. The word irrational for students really kind of is going to mean two things for you. And when I say it's uh, irrational, I'm talking about irrational number. There are two properties of an irrational number that I want you to know about. First one, So first property is it cannot be written as an exact fraction of integers. And uh, here's what I mean. Like uh, 1 divided by 2, that's a fraction with two integers, integer in the numerator, integer in the denominator. But pi, I can't do that with. There is no fraction of integers that is equal to pi. There are some that are close, like I'll tell you this one. Pi is approximately equal to 22 divided by 7. If you do 22 divided by 7 on your calculator, you're going to see that it's about 3.14. Okay, uh, But there is no fraction of integers that is exactly equal to pi. So that's one piece of irrationality. Let's talk about the, the second one that I'd like you to know. The decimal representation of pi never ends and never repeats. Okay, these are two facts of irrational numbers. And, and you know, I, I remember a couple digits of pi just because of the calculator I used when I was your age. It had a screen that showed me this many, 3.14159278. That, that's, that's what I remember of pi, and typically for most of the work that we do, um, you're only, probably going to only need those first couple. Okay, folks, that's it. Uh, there's a special ratio introduced here in this lesson today, and that is pi. And what I want you to remember about it is that it's a number that helps us describe properties of circles, which must mean that we're moving into a unit on circles.